Lenny. Hey, hit it up the park. Hit it with a strike. Hit him with a strike. From the national anthem, anthem. to the bottom of the night. I'm in Slendy, Ego. Slendy, Ego. Slendy, Ego. Slendy, Hey, You already know what's up. What's that? Another home run. But you know the job ain't done. Till we hold that trophy up. What's up, everybody? Welcome to episode 403 of the Talking Friars podcast and YouTube show. Ben Fadden with you here. It is May 25th, 2023. The San Diego Padres, they just won their first series since May 3rd against the Reds. Wow. Congratulations, San Diego Padres. Finally won a series again in the month of May. Yes, there's going to be a lot of, I'm sure, negative talk on here. but I'm just freaking happy that this team got the series win. Like a win is a win. They didn't deserve to win today, I don't think, but they got the win. And that Rugnetto door home run totally changed my whole uh, just feelings. I mean, it was, I was just sitting there like, all right, well, another series loss. I mean, this is getting really bad here. And it still is bad. I'm, I'm not trying to say like, oh, now they're the best team in baseball. But it's like, all right, you know, they showed fight here. They fought back after choking the lead. They fought back, and they went and won the game. After that bad inning happened, what was that, bad seventh inning where they just blew apart? Uh, Nick Martinez stunk today. Tim Hill wasn't great today. Hits after hits after hit, throwing the ball past crony at first on a bunt you know they're giving you outs and you're not taking them little things like that after that same thing i was like they're still down by only one run after this like how about let's just score a couple runs and go win this dang game and they didn't just score a couple they scored three runs on that rugnetto door three run home run they win this game take two out of three i think you have to be happy with taking two out of three like results wise which is what this business is, results-wise business in baseball, you got to be happy taking two out of three. Now, you don't have to be happy about the way the team is still playing, but results-wise, I think you got to be happy with this. You know, the Nats, they're not the best team, but the Padres are not the best team right now. I think right now we have to change our expectations. We can't expect this Padres team to go out there and say, hey, sweep the Nationals or we're going to be disappointed. Because that's not how good this team is right now. This team is not the Atlanta Braves right now. This team is not the Dodgers right now. You know, going into the year, we were like, okay, yeah, National Series, you should, have a, you should go sweep that probably. You know, you should sweep these series. But the way that this team is playing, you got to take all the series wins that you can get. And so if they can go five and four on this road trip, I think that's a positive step. If they go six and three, great. But just don't have a losing road trip, right? And so now they start off two and one with six games left to go. The Yankees for three this weekend, the Marlins before coming back home to play the Chicago Cubs. Let's keep it rolling here, right? Keep it rolling, Padres. You know, today, let's just move. Let's let, let's take the positive vibes and keep on moving. Right? Like, don't think about the negatives. I'm not expecting Nick Martinez to, to suck. Every time out, like he's been one of the best Padres relievers. He is one of the relievers I trust in this bullpen. Flush it and move on. Again, take the positives with you and let, you know, get on a roll here. That, that's kind of my thoughts right now. We're, we're obviously going to get into the offensive struggles, but a much more positive uh, Ben is probably what you're going to get today uh, after Rugnet Odor became a Padres hero. I mean, what a stretch here for Rugned Odor. I mean, going into spring training, Rugned Odor was not even on the team, right? And now he is one of the most important Padres on this roster at this moment. Manny Machado is out. Rugned Odor is getting more reps. He's getting more playing time, right? Hassan Kim, he gets hurt in this series finale. So he's probably not going to play on Friday. So Odor, he's stepping in here and he's playing like pretty much every day. And he has earned that playing time now every day. He went from someone that might not make this roster to someone that makes the roster to someone that sucked. You know, he went from someone that sucked 
at the big league level so far this year, hitting, I think, 105 in the first, like, 15 or 16 games. If I go to his game log here, and this is before the series finale against the Nationals. His below, his OPS plus is still 14% below league average. At least it was entering today. But in his first like 16 games, first 16 games through May 10th, he was hitting 105 with a 367 OPS. And then entering the series finale against the Nationals, since that day, so starting on May 11th, he's hitting 360 with a 1109 OPS. And then today, he drives in five runs. And this is weird to say, but imagine where this team would be without Rugnet Odor, you know, in this stretch since start of May 11th, right? Where would they be? Like, they, they don't have a good record since then. Without Odor, it would be even worse. The Padres would not be sitting at 23 and 27. They'd probably be sitting at 21, maybe 21 and 29, right? Maybe even worse than that. So they're not in a great spot right now. But thank goodness for Padres hero, Rugned Odor. I don't know where we'd be without him. Let's look at what the chat's thinking here. We'll go over today, yesterday, the, the the whole series, obviously. Gil says they battled LFGSD. That's what we want to see. One of the most the more criticized players coming up clutch. Make us eat our words. Yeah. I mean, I, I said at one point when he was struggling that bad, like, what, what value does he bring to this Padres team? And it wasn't just me. Uh, a lot of people were thinking that. What value? Talking heads on the radio as well. What does he what does he bring to this team? He should not be on this roster. And injuries have happened. He has gotten more playing time. And look what he has brought to the Padres uh, in that playing time that he's gotten. Christopher says, I was literally working and watching the game at the same time. All hope was lost for me seeing the two outs occur. Then Odor definitely surprised me. Yeah, it was a pleasant surprise, right? I mean, I'm getting ready to do my, you know, post game reaction a little bit, and then he goes yard, and it's like, holy cow, uh, Padres are winning this game now because Josh Hader's coming in. I have all the confidence in the world in Josh Hader. He's going to get the job done, and uh, he got the job done. And the Padres they end up winning. You know, this series they went three for twenty six with runners in scoring position. Like it wasn't great. They didn't deserve to win today, but this is a series where it's like. All right, they showed fight. Results is what you're taking from this series. Two out of three, that's what they won. You take it and you move on, and hopefully they start playing better baseball. The defense gets back to being actual Padres defense instead of playing like the Kansas City Royals defense, you know, because it was not great these past couple games. Devin says, we spent so many weeks ripping Odor saying he would not he, he, he should not be on the team and stuff, but oh, my, oh, my, Odor, he is stepping up big. It's a godsend relief. He is hot right now. Yeah. Gil says, can they keep this momentum going, though, because they haven't done it all season? Yeah, that's the thing, right? And I'm not – I've said before, I'm not the biggest believer in momentum in baseball because it's not like basketball where, okay, you have a hot shot or you're, you're shooting really good from this certain spot on the floor. No, I mean, with baseball – you're facing a different pitcher every game. You're, you're facing multiple different pitchers every game. So it's just kind of hard. And with, with football and with basketball, football, obviously quarterback, like if you have one of the best quarterbacks in the league, you're probably going to have success. Basketball, you have great players. You're probably going to make the playoffs. With baseball, it's a team thing. So with momentum, like it's hard, like, how many guys have momentum right now on this Padres roster with, with the offense, right? Odor, Soto, maybe. Um, those are two, I mean, that stand out to me right now. Probably forgetting someone. But there's not a whole lot of momentum, if people believe in that. There's not a whole lot of momentum in this offense right now. 
And then the pitching side of things, there's been some bumps in the road in the bullpen, right? So I'm not a whole, I'm not, yeah, the question, you know, can they keep this momentum going? Let's just keep the wins coming somehow. I mean, the momentum, I, I'm just not a huge believer in that, if that makes sense. If you want to join the show, give your thoughts. You can vent about this team if you're still, if you want to go that route, or if you just, you want to let out your excitement, feel free to click that link that is pinned up in the chat, or you can use that super chat button in the comments if you want to make sure that I get to your comment or your question. Uh, I'll try to get to most that are in the regular comments, but you put a super chat in there. It supports the channel, one, and two, it makes sure that I get to you. It separates it into a, an entirely different category. All right, let's get to these three games in this series. I'll get to them after this. Check out Gaglion Bros Famous Cheese Steaks and Garlic Fries on Friars Road. You can visit their website, gaglionbros.com, for their entire menu and enjoy their cheese steaks and fries at Petco Park and Snapdragon Stadium as well. All right, so game one of this series was on Tuesday. The Padres won 7-4. to four. This was the, probably the more encouraging win uh, of this series, for sure, for the Padres. There was an update on Manny, Manny taking swings off the tee before the game uh, on Tuesday, playing long toss. And then yesterday, the update, Manny took ground balls for the first time, front toss. And then today, there was the update on Manny. Uh, Bob Melvin saying pregame, I would not expect him in the lineup tomorrow. So that's not great news if you're someone that's like, man, we need Manny back. When Manny's going good, this team's going good. When he's not, they're not. Like, you want Manny back, obviously. He's the captain of this team and all that, right? But this could be a positive because they're not rushing Manny back. I'm sure Manny wants to be back in there on Friday. And Sitting here right now, I'm not going to count out Manny to appear at some point in this Yankee series this coming weekend. Not going to do it. Manny, if he thinks he can go, he's probably going to go because he has a lot of say in the organization and he wants to be out there. He rehabs his butt off. We know that. I mean, his trainer told me that uh, in the offseason, right? I, th I think it was in the offseason. He works his tail off to get back on the field when he's not on the field. So. Friday, Bob Melvin saying that he wouldn't expect to have Manny in the lineup there. Okay, but I'm not going to count out Manny for this weekend. That's for sure. Like he knows every game counts, especially with the way that this team has gotten off to this season. Like the poor start, the poor start from him. He knows every game counts. And so missing a couple games in his head is probably like, well, we could miss the playoffs by a game or two. And I could sit back and say, well, I could have went those two games and I didn't. He doesn't want to do that. So the Manny that I, I, I feel like I know, obviously don't know him personally, but the Manny I feel like I know, he's going to sit there and really lobby to appear in that Yankee series if he can, if he progresses, if he faces live BP, right? I, no rehab assignment's going to happen here. Like, Manny, it's going to be like, nope, I'm going in there. I'm playing. Can't waste time here. That's how I think Manny's going to approach this. So, again, my thoughts here, not surprised if he's not in the lineup on Friday. Not, I won't be surprised if he's not in the lineup Saturday or Sunday. But um, er, here, I wouldn't expect him to be on Friday. Wouldn't expect him to be Saturday. I don't, I don't know about Sunday yet. I mean, because that's a long ways away. But I wouldn't be surprised if he does get in there at some point. That's that's how I probably should frame it. Not going to count him out. Um, Tuesday, so Padres won 7-4. And what I liked is, yeah, they didn't do anything really with runners in scoring position. But they did show the power. And we haven't really seen the power very much from this Padres offense. And like I said in my post-game reactions and pre-game thoughts in this series, they can't rely on the long ball. They cannot rely on the home runs because there's just too good pitching in this league. Like you can't rely on that. You got to come through with runners in scoring position at some point, but the home runs were back on Tuesday. Like that was a positive bogey homered Dixon homered. Um, who, who am I forgetting? Crony homered, right? Soto homered dead center. That made it five, three crony adding on. 
uh, some insurance. Like those were positive. You know, Crony, I think he's had some good at bats. He's not performing up to the level of expectations this year. And that sucks to say because he's, you know, my favorite guy. But um, yeah, he's got to be better. But I did see some encouraging things this series. The home run, obviously, in game one, this last at bat that he had in this Washington series, great piece of hitting. Just took it the other way, got on base before Odor obviously hit that big three run home run that maybe turns around the Padres season. Uh, that's that's a wait and see moment, you know. Sunday, people were like, well, did this win turn around the Padres season? Maybe. I mean, I, I would have been like, no, because look at how they won that game, right? They took advantage of Corey Kluber sucking, right? But today, no, they battled back, and they they came through with a huge home run. Odor did, right? Uh, Bogarts came through today, right? Like, there were different guys that came through. They battled back, and they got the win, you know? They they earned the win at the end there with that comeback. I don't think they deserved the win, but I just feel like this could be more of a turnaround season turnarounder, if that's a th- if that's a term, than Sunday's game. Um, so Friday, Juan Soto comes out, uh, starts off the series great. Second second time returning to DC, a three hit game there for him. Uh, Darvish, he ended up getting the win. His ERA is down to three, six, seven. So Bogart, the home run, started off great, right? Two nothing lead. Soto scored. Dixon homered. I'm not going to sit here and expect that a whole lot. Are we surprised that C.J. Abrams homered in this game? No, he's a former Padre. Like you just knew it was going to happen. Thomas back to back with C.J. at the game up, and Darvish can give up home runs there and fall off a little bit late in outings. With him, it feels like he falls off a little bit late, like right at the end or at the beginning. It's kind of a rough start, and then he settles in. Uh, that t- Tatis sack fly, I mean, that was interesting. Made it four three Padres. Dom Smith, I mean, handed that run to Padres. Lane Thomas, I think it was. That's who it was in right field. Came up throwing absolute laser to home, but it gets cut off by Dom Smith. Odor probably would have been thrown out. And the game would have been tied. Who knows what hap- what would have happened after that. Uh, but the Padres are gifted a run there. And then the seventh, they add on, obviously, with the Soto home run. Crony homered. Uh, so that was good to see because Martinez gave up a run in the eighth. That made it 7-4. And that ended up being the final. Um, Mackenzie Gore, he faced you, Darvish, in this game. Went four and two third innings, three runs, seven hits, four walks which helped the Padres, obviously. Five strikeouts, two home runs allowed. That's kind of like the gore that we saw a little bit with the Padres, right? The velocity was there for McKenzie. Like, he, you could definitely care. He cared. You could definitely see that he cared in this outing. I mean, right out of the gate, I think he struck out Tatis, right? First, it was like 99 or something, Tornando. So he really cares here. And uh, But there was, there was wildness there, some walks. And we saw that when he was with the Padres. So I was not surprised with how McKenzie looked in this game. Um, And obviously wishing him the best, uh, except when he's playing the Padres. Uh, But there was definitely some positives uh, that I saw from from McKenzie, just looking at it as, you know, a a baseball fan or maybe as a a Nats fan would. um, They're getting a good pitcher. Like, I think he's going to end up being a good pitcher. Well, I I guess it's just a question of, okay, how long does it take for McKenzie to really dial in, um, dial it in there on the mound and, you know, have that command of his pitches? Or maybe he just ends up being like Blake Snell. And he's talented, has multiple pitches, velocity, but can't be consistent inside the strike zone. We'll see. We'll see what happens there with McKenzie. Um but yeah, so Tuesday, by the way, was the first time with two straight wins since May 3rd and May 5th. Those were the last two games of that Red Series. That that was the last series that the Padres won before today, before the Padres took two out of three against the Nats. So it, it had been a while, and it was good to start off the series with a win. Now, the second game of the series, after going 0 for 9 on Tuesday, they only went 0 for 1 yesterday in game two. So game one, 
the problem was, yeah, didn't come through with runners in scoring position. You know, they, they came through with home runs, and that was good. But again, you can't rely on that every day. They didn't come through with runners in scoring position. Same old story. On Wednesday, they had only one opportunity to. They went 0 for 1. And so the problem there, obviously, is just not getting guys in position to score, right? Not getting them in position. Uh, bottom of the second, and there were errors, right? This started the Padres' defense uh, being subpar, like not up to what we expect it to be, right? We'll get to the offense. Bottom two, Tatis had the error. Uh, Smith and Garrett, Stone Garrett, both scored. In the fourth, Odor, there was a single to right. Tatis throws it in. Odor is the cutoff man. He throws it, tries to throw out the runner at first for some reason. Airmails Crony. Uh, I think it was Crony. And runner gets to second, scored later. And so those runs bit the Padres. Those are a couple runs there, and they end up losing by a couple runs. Uh, the one through five hitters last night going to the offense. Tatis, Crony, Soto, Xander, and Matt Carpenter went 0 for 17. That can't happen. You know, you can't rely on the bottom of the lineup to be your, your main producers. Like Runet Odor, it's been great. And like I said earlier, where would the Padres be without Runet Odor, right? But that's not going to happen the whole season, is it? Odor doing this the whole year, that's not going to happen. You're going to rely on Brandon Dixon to hit a home run. I know that wasn't yesterday's game, but Tuesday, you're going to rely on that. No, the top of the order needs to be better. And it came through a little bit today, so that's good. But the consistency, right? That's what we want. We want that consistency because that's what we expect, right? That's what a lot of Padres fans pay their money for, to go to Padres games, right? Because you're expecting greatness consistently for most of the year, right? And we haven't seen that at Petco. And on the road even, haven't, you know, watching on television, it hasn't been as consistent as I think it needs to be, right? Uh, so, yeah, not opportunities. When the, when the one through five hitters yesterday – Go 0 for 17 at the plate. I I would assume, I mean, th there's not going to be very many runners in scoring position opportunities. And that's exactly what happened. Um, I saw this from, I think, Ken AC in his newsletter this morning before today's game. Padres 2 and 22 were in trailing after six innings. So after today, they're now 3 and 22 because they were trailing late. And they came back and obviously won. So, I mean, yeah, most of the time this season, I'm not saying fight. Well, because Bono, some of them, some of the game, when they're down after six innings, right, it has been the fight. Like, you just haven't seen it late in games. But recently, that's, that's not what it's been. So, I don't want to say fight, like the lack of fight. It's just guys not doing their jobs up to the level of, expectation the the level that they're getting made right right so um that that's been obviously an issue by the way before wednesday's game there was the update on drew pomerantz cleanup elbow surgery no return timetable i'm sorry but whenever i see a report or a manager say yeah he had a cleanup elbow surgery I'm sorry. I'm pretty much going to disregard the cleanup part of that and just be like, oh, well, Drew Pomerant, so an injury-prone guy, just had another surgery. Why should we expect this guy to come back at some point this year, right? Like on social media, I put out after the after the announcement, yeah, half, half an inning, over, under, half an inning, underdog should probably do this, underdog fantasy, half an inning for Drew Pomerantz in the big leagues this year for the Padres. And there were a lot of people, obviously, that put under on that. And I wouldn't blame you. Like, it sucks. Drew, you know, based on quotes that he had in spring training, I think it was to Kevin Acey, like, he is tired of this. He wants to help this Padres team win, but it's just not happening. His body is just not letting it happen. And I just couldn't even imagine if my job, I'm getting paid millions of dollars. I'm trying to live up to this, right? I want to help my team win. And I just keep getting hurt. That has to suck. And I know there's a lot of Padres fans that, you know, 
maybe hates too strong of a word, but they strongly dislike Drew Pomerantz because he hasn't done anything in this contract really. Right. Uh, but for me, I just kind of just feel for him. Like, I don't, I don't, I don't have any feelings toward Pomerantz. Like I, uh, and what I mean by that is like, I, do I hate Drew Pomerantz? No. Do I love Drew Pomerantz? No, I, I don't have any feeling towards him because he hasn't been on the field. You know, there's some guys where I'm like, yeah, I'm not a fan of that guy. Some certain former Padres, and I'm sure you know one that you can think of um, that comes straight to mind if you know me. Uh, there's some guys that I like. There's some guys that I love. And anyone who listens or watches this show knows who I love. That's because I've seen them on the field. and I know what they're, what they're about. They produce for the Padres, or they haven't produced for people that I don't like, right? With Pomerantz, I mean, I just feel for him because we we haven't even the fans haven't even had that opportunity to be like, oh, this guy sucks. When he's been on the mound, he's been good, but he hasn't been on the mound in a long time. You know, you know. So it's it's yeah, it's uh, it sucks. It sucks because you know this bullpen. It's been good, one of the best bullpens in Major League Baseball. And I know we're coming off of today, which wasn't good, but one of the best bullpens in baseball this year. One of the best bullpens. In the month of May, uh, like the best, or maybe the second best now. Um, imagine what they would be if they had Robert Suarez, if they had Drew Pomerantz. Hopefully they can get Suarez back at some point this year, but I'm not going to hold my breath for, for Drew Pomerantz. And I think the latest update we heard about Suarez was that he's just throwing on flat ground. And Morhone, he's on a rehab assignment, I believe. I think he's trying to get up to multiple innings. That's I think that's what Bomel said, I think, last week or something. So we'll see there, but Morahone's another guy. I, I guess I'd put more faith in Morahone returning than in Drew Pomerantz, but that's just, it's kind of just, you, you just got to hope with all those guys. Um, you know, Suarez, Morahone, I think we can put more faith in them coming back. With Pomerantz, I mean, you just got to prove it. Prove that you can come back and pitch. Because why should Padres fans believe that you will? And again, it's not it's not personal against Drew. It's just more like Drew's body. Prove that you can come back and be healthy and pitch. And that just has not been the case so far. Um, and by the way, before I forget to mention this this is about valley sports san diego and diamond sports and all that so this was before the padres national series got underway on tuesday there was a report out by the sports business journal i believe john orand and he reported there's a good chance diamond sports which is the parent company for valley sports there's a good chance that they won't make their payment next week may 30th and if that doesn't happen, if they don't make their payment, then the rights for the Padres TV will go to Major League Baseball. And I think they would be able to broadcast for free for fans, streaming-wise. And then I think it would go on another television channel not named Valley Sports. I think. And that would be a win for Padres fans, right? Because I know there's a lot of Padres fans that have a hard time watching games or streaming games. or They had YouTube TV and it's not on there anymore. I think it's not on YouTube TV. I don't have it, so I don't know. But there's there's been Padres fans that have had trouble with that. And so, obviously, those fans are hoping that Bally does not pay. Now, I was listening to Darren Smith on San Diego Sports 760 the other day. I think it was yesterday. And he said that he heard from someone that reached out to him saying that they think, I, I, that, they think that Diamond will make the payment. So, I don't know what's going to happen here. I I personally, I mean, my family. I'm, I'm fortunate enough to just have a game on TV, so it's it's not a big deal for me. But I would like to see Diamond not make the payment and just see how it goes, see what happens, because maybe this could be a good thing for baseball. You put the games for free, no blackouts on like MLB TV, right? Everyone can watch the game. If you don't have television, you can put the games on another television channel whatever bring back channel 4 sd if you want i'd be open to that matt vaskersion come do a game with mud one day uh whatever i'd be open to seeing what that looks like and if padres games 
if Padres fans can get the games for free, I mean, then of course you, you, you'd want that option, right? I would think. So I wanted to just touch on that, maybe the latest on that. So May 30th, that is the grace period. That That's when it ends, which is next, what, Tuesday? Yeah, next Tuesday. If they don't make the payment by then, then the rights go to Major League Baseball. And think Don, well, I know, Don, Mud, all everyone, Jesse, Tony, they're not going anywhere, scan. They'd be still doing the games. I just think it would be free on the MLB app or MLB TV, or maybe they stream it on YouTube. I have no idea. But the, don't worry. The broadcasters aren't going to be going anywhere. I think the same camera people are going to be doing the broadcasts. MLB is prepared to take over if Bally or Diamond Sports, the parent company, can't pay, can't make the payments. So I think every everything should be the same, just maybe the destination of where the games are might be different. That That's the update there. All right. Moving to today's game. Padres win this one, obviously, 8-6. to six. It looked like they were going to have a comfortable win. And then it did not become that. Um, it became a worse loss of the season. And then it didn't. So, yeah, it, there, there was a roller coaster. Um, Sarah Lang, she put out the, like, win probability chart. And it had it had the Padres soar up high and then late in the game shoot down low and then shoot right back up really high. And it's like, well, in in my in the in her replies, I was like, yeah. So uh, when both teams choke in the same game, that's what that win probability chart looks like. But yeah, so eight six. Nationals had the one nothing lead, but then Grish homered. By the way, that was after Ha Sung Kim fouled the ball off of his left leg. So the latest update on Ha Sung Kim fouls the ball off of his leg in pain, can't put much weight on that left leg. It was the one place where he didn't have the guard, right? The shin guard was there. It, it, the ball ended up being just higher than where the shin guard was. And of course, that's just baseball. So Kim has to be helped down the steps. But Bob Melvin says post game that the x-rays were negative. Probably won't be in the lineup on Friday against the Yankees in the series opener. But he doesn't think that it's going to be an IL situation. So that is great. Because I don't know about you, nothing personal against Brandon Dixon, but I'd like to see ha Sung Kim in there, you know, for defense and all that. I'd rather see that than Brandon Dixon have to be in there every day. Be down Kim and Manny at the same time. And if Kim goes on the aisle, then maybe Manny would feel like feel more pressure to come back because that's an infielder, a guy that was playing third with Manny out on the aisle. So hopefully that doesn't happen. And again, Manny can, I know this is not who he is. He, he's going to try to rush back and because he, he wants to be out there. He's the captain of the team. But hopefully if Kim's okay, this will not have Manny put more pressure on himself to return earlier than what he probably should when he probably should return, right? So there's the update there. Now, what happened in this game? Grish has that home run. Oppo barely gets out. 2-1 lead for the Padres. And Grish was doing everything there early. He made that great diving catch. Um, so 2-1 game. And then later in the fifth, Bogarts has a single with runners in scoring position. There were multiple hits today for the Padres with runners in scoring position. today. They went, what, three for something, three for like 16, I think. They had a lot of opportunities, so it's not like it was a great number, but three for something with runners in scoring position, I'll take that because that's progress from where the Padres were, right? Um, so that single made it 3-1. Tatis, he got to third on a bot call before that, and I believe Soto got to second, so that was good. You know, he was really working the pitcher there. Odor later in the inning, he doubled down the line, taking it oppo, not trying to do too much with it, made it 5-1 Padres. That was only the beginning for Ernesto Odor, obviously, because he comes through with, obviously, that huge home run. But in the seventh, well, with Snell. So, Blake, today it was not his best outing, but you got to give props where it's due, and props is due with Blake today because there were back-to-back -back innings where he had the bases loaded and he got out of those situations. 
there was the, what, first inning where Kim had that diving play. Looked like he may have caught it. Crony didn't see that he actually dropped it because the ball was blocked by Kim from Crony's view. And Crony wasn't covering second base, or not second, first. Kim throws it to nobody. Runner gets to second. He ends up scoring. So that cost the Padres a run. Padres defense did not help out Snell, but he only allowed one run there. Then, like I mentioned, back-to-back innings, bases loaded situations, gets out of it. So props to Blake there. Did not go a long time today. Uh, What, 98 pitches today? Didn't make it like through six or anything like that. But you got to give props where it's due. Like he kept the Padres in the game. And the Padres, again, they had the lead. They had a 5-1 lead before they choked it. Uh, Tim Hill was on the mound, right, I believe. Candelario doubled on a grounder to Tatis. Luis Garcia scored. The other Luis Garcia, the Nationals' Luis Garcia, made it 5-2. Then Corey Dickerson comes in, uh, makes it 5-3. Cuts the deficit there to a two-run deficit on a single to left. I believe that was with Nick pitching. Fastball, hot, you know, middle, pretty much, or middle up. Can't make that mistake. Then Dom Smith, he singles to right. Candelario scores. Dickerson to second, made it 5-4, made it a 5-4 game. And then the Nationals were giving the Padres an out. Padres had a one-run lead still. Alex Call bunts the ball, ground ball. All he was trying to do was get the runner to third base. That's what he was trying to do. And instead, they don't just get the runner to third, they get the runner to home because Nick makes a bad throw. Crony's covering first, and Nick throws it past him to the right of Crony, if you're looking at it from his perspective. And that reminded me of the Josh Hader. It was against the Nationals last year at Petco, but it was Hader, right? Maybe it was a swinging bunt. I don't think it was a regular bunt, but a bunt, this was when Hader was really struggling. Picks it up in the ninth, throws it down the line past Josh Bell. I remember where I was sitting. I was there, everything. Throws it past Josh Bell. And then I think he gave up a home run to, was it Manessis? Because he was a rookie then. I think that was his first home run. Gave up a home run later in the inning. Like, sucked. That, that, that was when Josh Hader stunk. Uh, but he bounced back, obviously. Martinez here, hopefully he bounces back over the weekend. Throws it past the first baseman. And then runs score, or a run scores there to tie it 5-5. Then there's another single. Cabert Ruiz, former Dodger prospect, he singles. And Crony was playing in. He was playing second base because of... Uh, I think Dixon was at first. They moved him to first. And if he was playing regular depth, I mean, the run probably would have scored because he would have just thrown it the first. But uh, he couldn't stop it. You know, the ball got past him. Ball got on. It touched his glove. Ball got past him. And Nats took the lead, 6-5. And so then let's go through the eighth inning here. So. Top of the eighth after the Nationals took the lead, and it's like, all right, go win this game. You know, I was talking about earlier how I tweeted, go win, go score a couple runs. It's the Nationals. You want to dig out of this? You gotta you gotta come back in some of these games. Go go get this win. You're only down by one. Go get it. And that's what they did. It was frustrating in the eighth. I mean, they didn't get the job done. Dixon doubled to lead off the inning, and then Grish bunts with two strikes, pops it up, he's out. Dixon almost gets doubled off. Cruz strikes out. Tati strikes out. So another missed opportunity there with runners in scoring position. Actually, three missed opportunities with the runner in scoring position. So that contributed today to their like three for 16 or whatever they went with runners in scoring position. Uh, but then the ninth came after a shutdown inning from Carl Drew Carlton. He hadn't pitched in a while. Uh, Crony singles, right? The opposite field work. Great job from him. Soto singled. I think it was a changeup, just middle of the plate. He capitalized on that there. Xander struck out. Carpenter struck out. Like Xander, I mean, he said something yesterday. This was in Kevin Acey's newsletter this morning. He said something bizarre. You you know he's in a funk. Like he was talking about how his mind is telling him to do something, but then physically his body's doing something else. Like he is totally not right right now. And that, that sucks to see because of how good of a start he got off to. And you know how much he cares. He's doing pregame work, postgame hitting work. Like, he's trying everything he can. It's just not working right now. 
I know he came through today with that single, but he's still not right. Uh, I think he would tell you that. He was telling that to, to the media yesterday. So he strikes out. Carpenter, I mean, terrible swing on that strike three. He feels lost, too. That's what it seems like. Um, but then Odor comes up, and he homers down the line. I wasn't sure if it was going to be fair, but it was fair. And Rugnet Odor became a Padres hero. As I said on my post-game reaction, like, I don't know if this Padres season is going to end up the way we want it to. Maybe they stink and they end up missing the playoffs or whatever. But you're going to remember this moment. You know, the regular season, you're not going to remember every game. Those that watch every game, you don't even remember it two weeks later, right? <laughs> For the most part. Uh, but there are moments in the regular season that you look at and you're like, yeah, I remember that. That was amazing. You know, last year, you remember Alfaro's walk-offs, right? You remember the Musgrove game that he worked deep into uh, in Milwaukee, right? You remember, or at least I do, the, the Padres clinching game. They lost that game, but they clinched a playoff spot there at Petco, right? You remember those. You remember the day before that where Crony had that late big home run and he was pumped up, right? You remember those games. You remember opening day last year where they poured it on, or the home opener, where Abrams was on the team, Musgrove pitched well. You remember that. You remember the Soto first game, right? Like, you remember moments. And this moment today is one that Padres fans will remember. Those that were watching the game, you will remember it, regardless of how the season plays out. And that's one of the beautiful things about sports is those moments, right? Because not everything's going to go your way. Because, I mean, let's be honest, like, things have not gone, gone the Padres' way this year so far. But today it did. and it can bring a smile to your face for the night. And maybe we don't have one on our faces at the end of tomorrow, but we have one today. And so just enjoy today is what I would say. All right. So this series overall, when we're looking at this series, was the series a success? Yes. You have to say it was a success results wise, because right now you're under 500. You have to win series. You got to keep winning series to get back. And I don't know how long it's going to take the Padres to get back to 500 or get over 500, but I think they will. I have faith that they will get over 500. I have, I have faith that they will finish with the winning record this year. Now, if you go past the results, obviously, I, I don't know if you label it as a success because there were still troubling things, you know, runner in scoring position, the defense, the bullpen a little bit, right? Like, okay. I understand that, but for me, like I'm just focused on the results, win or loss. Did they win or did they lose? I know we're talking about the runners in scoring position and some bad things that happened in this series, and we're going to probably do – I'm, I'm going to get to the chat. There's probably going to be plenty of that. If you want to join the show, again, click that link that is pinned up in the chat if you want to give your thoughts on this series or just the state of the Padres in general. Uh, but, again, I'm focused on the results. They took two out of three. It's not early, early in the year now where I'm like, well, whatever about the results. You know, um, that other team just beat the Padres. They're the better team. Like, right now, I mean, the Padres, they need the wins. And they got the two out of three this series. And so hopefully that trend can continue. All right. I'm going to get to the chat. Any super chats, put them in there because I'm going to get to those. After this, I want to tell you about the best and easiest way to play fantasy sports. It's Underdog Fantasy. They have great pick 'em games and best ball tournaments. In pickup games, just pick higher or lower on two to five players' stats, and you can win up to 20 times your money in a single night. You can go cross team, cross league, and even cross sport. Best ball revolves around the draft, which is what every fan loves the most about fantasy and it eliminates the hassle of having to manage your roster all season long, resulting in a fun and easy fantasy product. How does it work exactly? You enter a contest where you participate in a snake draft against other users. That lineup that you drafted competes against every other draft in the entire contest. The better the combined performance of your team, the more money you win. 
After your lineup is all played, Underdog will take the best performing players and automatically set them as your starting lineup. That's it. No waivers, no trades, no worrying about who to start or sit. After you complete your draft, your part is done. Underdog Fantasy offers best ball in a variety of ways, including daily contests, weekly contests, playoff contests, and season-long contests. You can either enter into these and compete against thousands of other entrants for huge prizes, or if you'd like, you can enter into a private draft with friends and family to compete for a smaller prize pool. Underdog keeps it super simple with their easy-to-use website and mobile apps. Sign up now by clicking the link in the description or by using the promo code TALKINGFRIERS and you'll double your first deposit up to $100 in bonus cash when you make your first deposit of $10 or more. So if you deposit $100, you get $100 free. If you deposit $10, you get $10 free. All right, let's get to the chat. There's a ton of comments in here. Love communicating with other Padres fans. By the way, this Yankee series coming up, Yankees, Padres, at Yankee Stadium in the Bronx, Friday. Tomorrow's game is on Apple TV+. Plus. So just want to put that out there. Don't turn, don't tune into Bally Sports San Diego. It's on Bally. It's it's not on Bally. It's on Apple TV Plus. No, no idea who's announcing those games, but just warning there. Saturday, 10:05 a.m. That's back on Bally. Sunday, 10:35 a.m. I think that's a major league baseball thing. Like instead of being at 10:05, it's at 10:35 because of the Peacock game. Maybe they just want that Peacock game to have more solo time. I don't know. But 10.35 on Sunday um, should be a fun series. I mean, haven't when was the last time they went to Yankee Stadium? Was that with Paddock? I think I remember Voight homering off of Paddock at Yankee Stadium. I think that's the last time. When would that have been? 2019, I think. That was a while ago. And Aaron Judge, the guy that Peter Seidler – really wanted to have in the offseason, the guy that AJ really wanted to have. They had that secret meeting during the winter meetings at Petco toward the clubhouse, the weight room, everything. Was willing to offer him more money than any other team, including the Yankees. And now they face off. So we'll see how that works out. And we'll see if Manny obviously comes back at some point in this series. Again, I'm not going to expect it, but I wouldn't be surprised if he comes back. All right. Neil says a Padres hero. Nah, he will be off the team before August still. Okay. It was a heroic moment, right? Like right now, today, he was the he was a Padres hero on May 25th. Okay. That's that's my my point. And he's been really good as of late. He's been one of the Padres' best players. Brent says Carpenter horrendous again. 0 for 5 today. That contract is looking terrible. DH is black hole in his lineup with him and Cruz right now. It's not looking great. Um, yeah, it's so is uh, a few positions on this team, you know? Yeah. The DH position, you, you want it to step up, but I, I feel like the focus for the fan base right now is more on Manny's return. It's on Bogart struggling. It's on crony. I think that's what it's on. Soto has been great. I mean, this series that he had against the Nats today, look at the box score. If you look at the box score today with Soto, and I know you're talking about, obviously you mentioned Carpenter, but it just got my mind thinking to other Padres at the top of the lineup. He only had one at bat technically today because he walked four times. He got on base five times today, scored two runs. His OPS is now 917. So that terrible start, with Soto, well, look at what he's doing now. This is more like the Juan Soto that was in Washington. So I don't know what it is. Do they need to put the curly W, make some grass in center field, and put the or put the curly W on the Gallagher Square lawn so he's comfortable? I have no idea. But um, Washington, he, he's comfortable there, that's for sure. And he's playing much better. So it's good to see. Bob Nightingale in the chat says, Padres give an extension to Odor. Seven years, 83 mil. Yeah, just give him the crony extension. 
Kirsten says, keep Odor in the lineup. He's heating up. Well, yeah, they're going to, and they kind of have to because Kim's hurt. Manny's on the IL. You kind of have to. But, yeah, Odor, I mean, the guy's like Barry Bonds right now. That's what it feels like. Uh, Captain Zeno says, with Hassan Kim possibly on the IL, who will be called up? Lopes? It doesn't seem like he's going on the IL. I mean, that could change with swelling or whatever, but it doesn't seem like he will go on the IL. So that's good. If he does go on the IL, I would think probably a Glacius would come up. I don't know if they'd go right to Lopes. Yeah, I don't know. JD's third says, can we go the next few weeks depending on heroics from Odor? Well, no, no. I don't think so. Yeah, collectively, the lineup has to be better. But I just wanted to shout out Rugnet Odor because he's been really good. Captain Zeno says, Bally needs to miss the payment. I, I am stationed on the East Coast, and it is hard to watch the games. Been using Dofu. Yeah, I mean, that you're probably in the boat of a lot of Padres fans. There are some Padres fans in San Diego that they're just like, all I do for TV is watch the Padres, so I'm not going to pay for it. So and maybe they went with YouTube TV instead or Hulu or whatever, and, and the Padres aren't on there, so they're kind of screwed, and they're, they're looking at, some other places, and you you know what I mean by those, right? Other places to to watch the Padres. So yeah, I think I think this would be a win for a lot of people, a lot of people involved. Kirsten says Padres should move to California Networks NBC Sports. Uh, well, the Giants and the A's are already on there, right? So what? I don't think there'd be room for the Padres on there. And that would have to be a whole new negotiation, right? To be put on NBC Sports. Is NBC Sports even a thing now? Because wasn't it like Channel 65 and now not? I don't think it's a thing anymore. NBC Sports. Hasn't that moved to like Peacock? I know there's NBC, obviously, but they're not going to put games nationally on NBC every night. Devin says YouTube TV, the price increase to $72.99. Well, if you don't have the Padres on there, didn't they take MLB Network off there too? Or maybe they put it on, but I think it was off of there at some point. Yeah, for me, like I wouldn't have YouTube TV then. Because I watch a lot of MLB Network. I obviously watch all the Padres games. Kirsten says Padres should move Walker to the top of the rotation, Darvish behind him. Well, that's not the way it works. Like when you're in the rotation, wherever you slot in, like that's where you slot in because all the pitchers are on a routine. So maybe the Padres regard Walker as like one of the probably the best starter in the rotation right now, but it's not like they're going to move him to, okay, pitch in front of Darvish because now you're the number one guy right now. It's they just pitch every fifth day or whatever schedule they're on. It's not about, oh, okay, you know, that, that's like the beginning of the year stuff, or maybe the all star break where they may where they want to reset or something. There's not a whole lot of shifting around in, in the rotation because pitchers they, they stay on a schedule. John says Padres will sweep the Yankees. I, I like that optimism. I don't think so, but I like that optimism. Yankees are playing well right now. Aaron Boone, I mean, he's getting thrown out of every game. He got thrown out again today because um, the umpires, again. Man, he's so funny to watch when he gets ejected. So we'll see if that happens. Um, but no, the Yankees, I know they just choked a lead, what, yesterday to the Orioles? But I did a breakdown on that, by the way, on my MLB YouTube channel, my baseball YouTube channel, uh, Baseball Struck, so you can check that out there if you want to. Um, but no, the, the Yankees, they're playing better. As of late. Yeah, Hosmer got released today, huh? 
Can you imagine the reaction if Hosmer came back? Well, I can't imagine it. It would be a lot of people pissed off. I'd rather have Brandon Dixon than Eric Hosmer. Yeah, maybe Carpenter can use that that porch in this series. Yeah, he had success with that as a Yankee last year before he got hurt. All right, any more Padres chat? Put it in the chat or super chat. If you want to join the show, you can click that link that's pinned up in, at the top of the chat. That's for, obviously, the live audience here on YouTube. Quick reminder, Breaking Tea, click the link in the description for great San Diego sports shirts, sweatshirts, Padres, Aztecs, Wave. Use Underdog Fantasy for great uh, higher or lower pickums and all that. I mean, today, sorry, I went with Snell under. He finished with 98 pitches. The The over-under was, or the higher or lower was 97 and a half. So just barely missed on that one. So apologies for that. Um, but. I'll get him next time. Uh, SeatGeek, code Talking Friars. Again, code Talking Friars for SeatGeek. $20 off your order. I really encourage you to do that. I'm, I'm trying to help Padres fans save money. Because the Padres tickets, I know they can get expensive. Especially, maybe maybe they're not as expensive because of the way the team's playing. But I know to start the year, they're they're definitely more expensive. Because of the payroll and the expectations and a lot of people want to get into the ballpark, right? So use that code, use it to your advantage. All right. I want to get to some other San Diego sports stuff. I just want to see, is there anything else that I wanted to get to here? Um, before we get actually, yeah, before we get to some other San Diego sports stuff, I think Bob Melvin, he spoke to the media. So here's Bomo after today's game. You know, get to cash in on some, you know, runners in scoring position early in the game. We did obviously late as well, and Odor's had a lot to do with that lately. He's a guy that was a late side in spring training, had to wait for his opportunities recently with Manny down. He's gotten those opportunities, and it seems like he's making the most of them. Without a doubt. I mean, he's, he's, you feel good when he's at the plate right now. Obviously, you know, when guys are swinging good and when they're not. But, um, you know, I've said often, he's not, a, he's not afraid of any situation. I've seen him many times over on the other side, and... You know, right now he's swinging a hot bat for us and came up at the right time. Some hits with runners in scoring position today. And just how important was it for the offense to maybe pick up the defense and the pitching today, which has really been carrying the club for a while? Yeah, they, you know, we typically we play two games in a row not very well defensively, um, which is unlike us a little bit. And the bullpen's been so great, Nick in particular, that to be able to pick those guys up with a different facet that's going to be important for us to, you know, obviously swing the bats and get some big hits and, you know, showed up at the right time today. How would you evaluate Blake's outing today? It was spotty as far as his command at times, but ended up making, you know, four walks, ended up making big pitches, throws 100 pitches and, you know, in five innings or right at it, but got big outs when he needed to. Um, you know, had to struggle a little bit with, like I said, with his command, but, you know, ends up making a big pitch. We talked yesterday about needing to punch back and the fact that you guys were down and, yeah. and came back, not just the Odor home run, but the at-bats by Cronenworth and... and so there was what right. that all mean? Yeah, look, we have the ability to do it. It's just stringing some together. So, you know, today's a good start. We're going to have to continue to do that. Yep. You know, late in the game here, it's tough to see, too. You know, got to give their credit, hit it some, hit her some credit, too, for putting up a five spot when, you know, the seventh inning shadows are over the place and stringing some hits together. So, you know, hopefully this is the game that kind of spurs us to be better offensively. How big was that by Dixon? He didn't have much notice, comes in and kind of gets you guys started. Yeah, no, it was great. I mean, you know, we were joking about that. There's no consequence of bat there with, with two strikes. But, you know, it seems like today he, he found that stroke that we saw in, in, you know, we were seeing in AAA. So had good at bats across the board today. Uh, we'll see, you know, with Kimmy, x-rays negative. Um, felt better as the day went along. I, I doubt he'll be able to play tomorrow, but at this point it doesn't look like an I.L. Or mentioned to me yesterday how good he's been feeling yeah. the last 10 games. How good is it for you to see 
the process translating to results? Yeah, he works hard. Look, he's he's ready for anything right now. You know, I had to, had to play third, he's played second, he's played the outfield for us, a little different role that he's had, you know, at any point in time of his career. He just wants to help his team win, and today he certainly did that. What advantage on Brett Sullivan's tag in the seventh inning? It, 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 initially, it did not look like he tagged him, and then, you know, when he came in, he said, I got his foot. So it was, you know, an important call that, you know, that, that the out call was made because when you go back and look at replay, you, I mean, you could tell a little bit that he got it, but, you know, obviously sometimes the ones that are close don't go your way. So I think we, maybe we benefited by the fact that the initial call was out. Yeah. How did I forget that? That Brett Sullivan tag. That was really good. I mean, so ball gets away, and the Nationals are going to add on another run. That would have been their what, seventh run, and that would have made a, a three-run game, at, right? A three-run three or – no, I think it would have been a two-run game if that run would have scored. But Sullivan, he wasn't going to get him if he flipped the ball to Martinez. So he tags the runner, just barely gets him, and I believe, was it the Nats who challenged? Nats challenged. I think the call in the field was out, and it stood, confirmed. Padres got the out, and that was big because the Odor home run, that would have, well, that would have put the Padres up one, right, instead of two, and that would have been even closer. Well, inning would have continued as well. Like, who knows what would have happened there? So, yeah, that was, uh, that was a big play. And Brett Sullivan, he made some big blocks today behind the plate too. I, I don't remember like certain the inning and the, the, the count, the out, batter, whatever, but he made some big blocks today. So if you're not going to bring it offensively, you know, the catching position, at least be, you know, a backstop there uh, behind the plate. And Brett was pretty darn good today. So props to him for that. All right. Let's get to some other San Diego sports stuff today. I want to focus on San Diego State. So there, there's some stuff going on th this weekend with San Diego State. So San Diego State softball, they're at Utah this weekend. Friday, 7 p.m. is the first game. It's the Super Regionals, best two out of three. The winner goes to the Women's College World Series. This is the first Super Regional that San Diego State softball has ever been to. So. Congratulations, obviously, to them, as I said, uh, when they advanced to the Supers. Friday, 7 p.m. on ESPNU. That is game one. Saturday, game two, which is guaranteed, 2 p.m. Don't know what channel, but it'll be probably on ESPNU or ESPN2, one of the ESPN networks, ESPN Plus maybe. That's game two. If necessary, if the series is tied at one between Utah and San Diego State, Game three on Sunday, winner take all to the Women's College World Series, Oklahoma City, will be on Sunday. Don't know the time, but that's what we're looking at. So Friday, 7 p.m., Saturday, 2 p.m., Sunday, don't know the details there. That's an if necessary game. And the keys for San Diego State, so they're 6-0 the last six games. They've outscored opponents 19-3, or they did in L.A., in that L.A. regional. So it's the offense. Can they keep the offense going? It seemed like they relied on the home run ball a little bit there, um, but that's that's going to happen um, when when you get a pitch middle like that. Like at San Diego State, they they were playing well going into the regionals, right? Like I think they won three and they won yeah three in a row going into the regional, and then Callie Decker who transferred from Florida, she's homering, and uh, they're just – they're clicking right now. So can the offense continue to score runs like that? That's a key, obviously. And Allie Light, how is she going to do? Obviously, she's the ace. You know, Maggie Ballant, she left – she was not eligible after last year. She was the ace. Now it's Light. How is she going to do, right? Uh, I think Didi Hernandez is their like their second, you know, re reliever, second pitcher. How are they going to do? Can they limit Utah? In Utah, Mariah Lopez, their ace against Ole Miss in their regional, 
Uh, 14 innings, two runs allowed, 15 strikeouts. So can they can they do damage off of her? That Those are some keys, obviously, for the Super Regional. San Diego State, I believe they're playing right now in baseball in the Mountain West tournament. Their first game was today, I believe, against Air Force. That's what I, I want to say it was against the force. Okay, they're down 7 nothing, Or that was three hours ago. So, yeah, I guess they lost. Yikes. It's double elimination. So I believe they play tomorrow, but they'd have to win twice, I think, tomorrow. So that's not looking good there. But softball plays this weekend. And then I wanted to congratulate J.D. Wicker, the athletic director for San Diego State. Congratulate him because he was named yesterday the Athletic Director of the Year at the Sports Business Awards in New York. So congratulations to J.D. Wicker. Uh, he has done so much in the last, like, calendar year. I mean, I tweeted this out on my personal Twitter, at SD. so just my non-Padres thoughts go there. He has done so much. Open Snapdragon Stadium. First matches for the Wave because he oversees that, right? Because San Diego State, it's Snapdragon Stadium is theirs. First matches for the Wave. They make the playoffs. They win a playoff match. They set NWSL attendance records for, like, pretty much everything. San Diego State men's basketball to the national championship game and having to deal with all of that. Secured the Man, uh, Man United Wrexham friendly, which is going to be huge. The Gold Cup semifinal It's going to come here, right? Uh, MLS to San Diego that just happened. He played a big part in that, obviously, because there was a lot of agreements and complicated work that had to go into that because of different dates that were already secured or different uh, teams and concerts and all that that are going to be going already scheduled into Snapdragon. So there was a lot that had to go into that. And he got that done. San Diego State softball for Super Regional. By the way, just hired... Their head coach, uh, Stacy Newman Denise, uh, that was I think a couple years ago. So, right out of the gate, here, this success, you know, second year in, made the regionals, uh, I believe in Arizona State last year, closer to a power five conference move. I mean, he has done so much, and there's more that I'm probably forgetting, you know, with Snapdragon Stadium and the concerts that have happened. Um, what, Red Hot Chili Peppers, I think, was there. Jimmy Buffett. I'm not a huge music guy, so I'm not too familiar with who they are. But big concerts that have been there and more concerts that will come there. I wouldn't be surprised in the future if we see some U.S. Women's National Team matches there or friendlies there uh, because of how big of a fan base or how big of a soccer town San Diego is. Like, I, th I think it's a no-brainer to have the U.S. Women's National Team come here at some point. Maybe the U.S. men's national team at some point has a friendly. So there's a lot of great things happening with San Diego sports, and a lot of that goes to J.D. Wicker. He has been involved in a ton of that. So, yeah, he, uh, he, he deserves athletic director of the year, and I wouldn't be surprised if at some point next couple months we see San Diego State go to either the Pac-12 or the Big 12, receive that invitation, and – Add another thing on to J.D. Wicker's accomplishments, accomplishments list as the San Diego State Athletic Director. Athletic Director, what he's done in the past calendar year has been nuts. So congratulations to him. I mean, he he's probably hasn't had a ton of sleep. A lot has happened there. Uh, some matches that are happening this weekend. The Loyal, they obviously a win last weekend in Miami. They are going now to Oakland. That game, Saturday at 7 p.m. And then the San Diego Wave, Friday night against the Portland Thorns. This is maybe the match of the year, the most anticipated match at Snapdragon for the Wave. Obviously, playoffs are different, but most anticipated match maybe. I know it's a Friday, but the Padres aren't in town. This is the big event happening on Friday night, sports-wise, in San Diego. Come out, support. Let's get this entire lower bowl sold out. I mean, it's going to be great. Wave, Thorns, there's so much star power 
in this match. Obviously, they have the Challenge Cup on Wednesday, May 31st. Uh, by the way, tickets start $13 uh, that start at that. So get your tickets for that as well. But tomorrow night, Sophia Smith, Becky Sauerbrunn. I know she's coming back from injury. Maybe she'll play. Maybe she won't. But there's a lot of talent there. Crystal Dunn. Obviously, Sophia Smith, Sam Coffey. Uh, you look on the wave side of things, obviously, with Alex Morgan, Naomi Gurma, Taylor Korniak might make the U.S. Women's National Team alongside those two players. She is now healthy, so that's good to see. Obviously, Kaylin Sheridan. Like, there is so much super star power from both sides, combining both sides in this match. So, uh, yeah, get your tickets, San Diego Waves website. Um, it's going to be fun. It's going to be a really fun match. And the two sides played each other, but that was – Earlier this year in Challenge Cup play, that was the first Challenge Cup match, I believe, that the Wave had. That was at Snapdragon. But Alex Morgan barely appeared in the match. Sophia Smith, I believe, played the first half. You know, they were coming off a busy, I think they were coming off U.S. Women's National Team friendly. They were coming off another Wave, or their own NWSL match the weekend before. Then they had the Wednesday match. So there were a lot of matches there in a short period of time. So they weren't all the, all the stars weren't playing the entire game, but on Friday, you're going to get all of them playing. So it's going to be fun. I cannot wait for Friday night. Uh, that's going to be great. So that's what's going around for San Diego sports this weekend. Obviously Padres, Yankees wave thorns. That's Friday night. And then the loyal playing on Saturday night. All right, let's see here. Obviously, San Diego State softball, like I mentioned, playing this weekend as well in the Supers. David with the Super Chat. I appreciate it, man. So he says, you mentioned far earlier. Do you know why he is no longer on the team? I thought he was a good catcher and could hit. Thanks. Well, he's not on the team. Maybe some of it was the contract stuff, like they didn't want to pay him as much as they were slated to pay him. But they thought that they were going to have Camposano as an option, and he got hurt. And Alfaro, they weren't, it seemed like, according to, I think Dennis Lynn reported it, or might have been AC in the offseason, like the front office weren't huge fans of Alfaro, not personally, but like as a catcher, striking out a lot, too much for their liking. And behind the plate, I don't think he was the, the best defensive catcher out there. So they decided to, to part ways. They were like, all right, well, we can, we have Brett Sullivan. We have Luis Camposano. Nola, by the way, again, you got to remember at that time, just came off catching all of the postseason games. There was a lot of trust there. So they're like, well, we're, they tried for Vasquez, didn't get him, Christian Vasquez, that is. So they went with Nola, Campy, Sullivan in the minor leagues. They signed Pedro Severino. I know he opted out, but they signed him. They just signed Kevin Pluecki. The catching position is not great. But even with Alfaro, I'm not so sure that we would be looking at the catching position being like, oh, that's not a weakness on the team, even with Alfaro here. If Alfaro was here, I think we'd still be looking at this position saying, yeah, not great. It's It needs improvement. So why do the Padres want to pay him millions of dollars to still be sitting there saying, yeah, we could still improve, if that makes sense? I think that's probably why. Kirsten says, can't wait for MLS soccer, finally World Cup players in San Diego. Well, we already have World Cup players in San Diego, Women's World Cup. Alex Morgan is, like, arguably the best player in the world, uh, definitely one of the best players in the world. So we already have that. Naomi Gurma, Kaylin Sheridan, Emily Van Eggman, Sophia Jakobsen. Who am I forgetting? Gurma, Korniak, Morgan, Jakobsen, Sheridan. Van Egmond, there's probably someone else. Jane Shaw, she's on the, I think, U20 team. So there's a lot of talent in San Diego already, but I get your point. Men's men's team, yeah, I'm excited for it. I'm going to continue rooting for both clubs, the Loyal and the MLS team, as long as the MLS team obviously shows that they care about the community. And so far, it seems like they're off to a good start. I mean, obviously – including the loyal would have been the best solution, I think. But, hey, you spend that much money coming in as an expansion team, I understand them wanting to do 
what they want with it. Gil says, Portland Thorns are good, but the waiver better. I don't know. Waiver playing better the last couple matches, and I know the Thorns did lose to, I think, Orlando, or was that Washington? Um, I think Portland lost recently, but Portland's the team to beat. They're they're the defending champions. Um, both teams are really close, I'll say that. I think I'd probably have to give the Thorns a little bit of an edge, but the Wave are there. They're definitely there. All right, that's going to do it, everyone, for Talking for Hours episode 403. Thank you so much for your time. I appreciate it. I appreciate you all. And I'll talk to you all next time. Have a great rest of your night. See ya.